Hello my friends, welcome back to another week of painting. This week I'm going to paint something really nice and eye-catching. It's um, a flower-based painting. It's very, very pale, uh, pinky, greys, blues in a background. And then this beautiful flower kind of almost coming out from the depths, coming out into the canvas, um, almost kind of disappearing into the background something really really nice and eye-catching like that a kind of a white floor with hints of pink and some bright orange and reds in the centers so yes something nice and colorful this week um again thank you so much for your support thank you to all my patrons for your support as well and fernand i hope you enjoyed that um tutorial on patreon just for you as well so um yes let's go and have some fun with this don't go anywhere okay my friends here we go there's a reference photograph. Isn't that just stunning? Beautiful pinks, violets, purples, mauves, a little bit of green, then as a complementary colour. This is going to be nice. I'm looking forward to doing this. Looking very, very forward to painting this. Okay, I shall tell you what colours I have. Titanium white, Naples yellow, phthalo blue, lamp black, some burnt umber. I'm not sure if I need burnt umber, uh, but it's there anyway. A little magenta, a lizard crimson, and some cadmium yellow pale there we go they're the colors i also have some turpentine with a little linseed oil in that and some tissue paper a 12 by 16 canvas primed and sanded lightly okay and that my friends is it let's crack on and have some fun with this and i also have a frame as well ready to stick on this afterwards to see how it looks okay um i suppose let's just do a very quick sketch just of the outline of the flower very very quickly um, you know, look we don't have to go to too much trouble with this but let's make it nice so we have a leaf like that i may end up making this slightly bigger than it is on the photograph there but look we'll see another one like that we have another lovely one that comes down like that just very very loosely now okay like that and uh, we have another one that kind of comes out and has a very sharp kind of a turn like that and we have another one that comes sort of let me see you now so this one comes like that this will be the center of the flower in here another one then comes cuts in front of that one and comes around and into the back of that okay another couple of little leaves up like that all wiggly wiggly little lines like that we can kind of play around with that as we go i'm not worried about these back ones so I just want to leave this when I'm painting the background, okay? Um, perhaps even we could paint some of the leaves. We could draw some of the leaves as well. Let's just draw the primary leaves, the most important ones, just there like that. And then it comes up and around like that. It could be a bit longer now, but you know what I mean. You get the idea. And we have another one that comes across like that and it goes out of the picture but i'm just going to exaggerate it anyway okay like that and it comes down like that okay i think that's all we need to do we need not worry about the other ones because they're going to be faded into the background okay i have a large flat brush a number seven flat nothing too big i want to take my time with this background and i'm going to dampen that with some thinners and let's um let's go let's have a bit of fun i'm going to start with that light blue you see that beautiful blue we have up on the left corner i love that it's absolutely stunning so a warm blue let's get some phthalo blue and let's get some and also just remember and bear in mind okay um i want to keep the background nice and dark around this flower so then the flower really pops okay so don't be shy with your colors take plenty of color phthalo blue and a little magenta i will probably be using a lot of magenta today because looking at that photograph now i can see and i don't know if you can see there's just so many blues and pinks going through this photograph and i think magenta will be the perfect color for this so let's try that let's go with that look beautiful beautiful warm kind of a blue up there a little more magenta into that lovely lovely color This is going to be a real fun tutorial, I think. So now, I'm going to leave it at that, okay? I might just add a touch of strong blue just in the side here, in this corner, okay? Now, my, 
my canvas is only just after drying after a prime so i hope it kind of all dries in properly and it's not patchy i could have left it for longer but i didn't i was just so impatient and so eager to get started with this painting that i just kind of let it dry and went straight into it so it's not completely dried in it feels dry but it probably could do with another hour of drying anyway let's mix in some magenta and white as we come down on this so a little bit of thinners on your brush some magenta some white and i want to soften that around and into the blue okay up here don't worry about your lights and darks and all that kind of stuff okay we can start adding those in as we go so first of all let's just get a nice background in here and i can start adding colors so once it's nice and wet then i can start adding colors into it okay so now you see just leave the brush strokes on your canvas don't try and smooth it too much because that will create movement in the background as well you see that nice movement let's get some magenta and a little of that blue and some white so we have a nice pinky color there look nice and pink there we go that's nice and let's just go around the flower i'm simply popping little hints of this color in here and there that's all i'm doing um we have a little bit up there look let's pop some up there and let's take some more blue into that now as it comes over it starts kind of going into a dark or kind of a mauve doesn't it a deep like a gray sort of a mauve so let me just pop some pink in around here and there now first before we move on over there there we go little little squiggles of pink here and there you can if you like then maybe soften some of this in with the fan brush or your your blender brush rather if you like um i may do it still now we have a nice gray kind of a mauve coming in don't we so i'm going to take some magenta little thinners some white and some black okay a touch of lamp black and even a touch of blue so that now should give us a nice kind of a gray sort of a mauve there we go that's the color let's pop that in Um, I'm not using a huge amount of thinners in this I just I'm using plenty of paint and I'm dragging the paint around on the canvas you see that really drag it around but don't be shy use plenty of the paint I keep taking tiny touches of thinners because as I was saying earlier my canvas is not completely dry as in the primer it's not 100% dry it's getting there but you probably notice this yourself at home if you prime a canvas and you don't leave it dry long enough and then you start painting you feel the paint almost kind of soak into the canvas because that barrier is just not dry completely enough so that's probably what's happening now but use a decent bit of thinners if you want if you need to make it really move around use plenty of thinners now i'm just going to go around lightly as i'm moving around on the canvas now i'm adding little hints of extra colors into it okay so look a little bit of blue for example in here and just mix it through i think you know adding colors as you're painting as you're going along and mixing it as you're going along i think it just makes a nicer composition i know a lot of people may just put in a completely flat background and then start adding colors that's very similar but as you're painting and adding colors I think it's just much much nicer it just gives it a much nicer finish now a little bit of the blue up there let's get some more of that okay that's coming on lovely now lovely colors aren't they lovely soft soft colors that's what i love as it comes down you can see it goes right into a kind of a greeny bluey green a soft soft pastel-y kind of a green so we'll start doing that in a moment i just want to help the transition here from those colors into a green so a little bit of soft gray just along here and there that will move down then into a nice green and look even let it just flick around here and there to suggest little touches of color in the background now this will all make sense now i'm probably going to soften this in with my blender brush in a moment before i start adding extra 
flowers and stuff in the background so look not to worry let's go into a more of a greeny blue over here i'll take some phthalo blue and the trick with this now is to work quickly try not to spend too long on one area like this just put your paint on quickly okay don't be shy a little phthalo blue a little magenta a touch of black okay little touch of black take tiny amounts as you go because it's a very strong color and i'll take a hint of cadmium yellow now you can add little touches as you go so for example a little magenta so now you can see we have this wonderful kind of greeny bluey mauvey sort of a hue and even a hint of white perhaps if you wish as well so let's take a look at this now i think a touch more yellow just to make it more on the green side and there we are it's almost like a turqu like a warm warm kind of a turquoise isn't it a little bit more of the yellow there you take another little more yellow there and even a hint of burnt umber and then some white so you can see how a tiny tiny addition of a little color can make a big difference to your your hue on your palette okay and on your canvas a tiny amount of extra color can make a big difference so look a little bit of brown that are mad, that immediately makes it warmer doesn't it now i hope it's showing up okay on the canvas i hope that color is showing okay i'm going to start going a little bit deeper with my colors a little black okay a little phthalo blue a little magenta a touch of thinners okay and some cadmium yellow now that will give us almost like a muddy muddy gray let's take some more magenta let's just pop some of this in down here I really just want to focus right now on getting the canvas covered, all right? Getting the white of the canvas covered. I'll take some blue, some yellow, and a hint of white down here. It's more of a grey kind of a green. And I come across, I start making it more blue. So when you're doing this now really just look at your photograph that you're copying and pick out the colors pick out the colors that you see and simply just put in those colors and you can just mix it together then at the end just literally pick out your colors whatever it is that you can see so now i have now a nice little background covered in there i could start softening this together with a soft brush but you notice now the way the paint is not kind of softening properly because i never left the canvas dry fully now the canvas was dry it just wasn't completely cured if you know what i mean but i will just give all of this a nice little softening together okay very quickly and i'm then going to start popping in some leaves and petals and all that kind of stuff in the background in just a moment but just to take some of the roughness out of this really that's all i'm trying to do okay now let's start i actually want to put a little bit of green in the background as well there's a nice bit of green down there i want to get that nice green color so i go with some cadmium yellow phthalo blue and a touch of magenta there's a nice warm green just popping in down here just here and there i can kind of see it just down there there we go and then soften that together again just to soften it out gently okay i'm now going to move to a smaller brush and i'll start putting in some suggestions of petals and 
leaves and that kind of stuff in the background okay first i'm going to mix um, a slightly dark kind of um, a leaf color a cool cool green color i'm going to take some phthalo blue some magenta now i probably didn't even need crimson realistically on my palette afterwards i don't think i would have needed it but i just like to have it there in case i want to take a little every now and then so phthalo blue magenta a little white i don't want to go too too light with this a touch of black and then a hint of cadmium yellow that hint of cadmium yellow will just give it that slightly cool green hue okay so we have a very kind of deep cool green and let's just go up here and put in you see that cool green lovely cool green there in the background and remember now all of this will be softened in i'm going to be softening all of this into the background so not to worry okay don't worry about trying to get it absolutely perfect and let's just look around and focus on all of the cool greens that are there first um, we put one there we have a couple of nice little circular ones down here deep 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 kind of greens so all of this is just enticing the viewer to look into the background okay that's all it's doing it's just enticing you to have a look i'll take a little into magenta warm it up slightly you know it's just a case of picking up hints of different colors and always use the same kind of palette throughout your painting so for instance i wouldn't have a very bright yellowy green just on one side of the painting i'd always maybe put a little flick of it here and there um that just balances the painting out it really does it just helps balance the painting out and it ties it all together so try not to have um lots of clashing colors on your palette just add little hints of them here and there now i'm going to take some crimson and a magenta and a touch of white okay and what i'm going to do is just pop a little hint of that to suggest perhaps that there's a little flower or something behind as well okay and remember a lot of this will be softened back in again so a little lighter pink here and there okay you see what i mean it's just to suggest that there's stuff going on in that background all right just to suggest um even hints of warmer pink and you can see down here we have again hints of the flowers and you see the way i'm keeping some of my blue on my brush so when i pop little splashes of color on you see the way it picks up that little bit of blue as well which is absolutely lovely okay look little hints of color in the background now as they come down into the depths of the painting it's going to start getting much darker isn't it so i'm going to make it a much deeper deeper color much deeper blue even add a hint of black as well that will give us some nice dark deep color okay and you could even put look little flicks little squiggles it's all just to add movement into the background that's really the only purpose for this now i'm going to go um, i'm going to take some magenta and i'm going to pop some magenta up here on this okay just to suggest a little hint of a flower and little crimson with magenta little tiny pops of red here and there look that just catches the eye okay you see what i mean it's just little tiny little hints and a nice one in there okay so my next step for this is a little pointy brush and i'm going to take some dark color just some 
kind of a dark greeny blue or something like that okay I'm just simply going to suggest some some little twigs and that kind of thing off in the distance okay really this now is kind of going to be softened in and we could pop a little dark onto these maybe give those petals a little bit of a turn up there so you can kind of get the feeling of what i'm trying to achieve it's just this very sort of loose faded background okay and again another little bit of dark here and there just pop some little colors and shadows around so maybe a little hint of blue on one of these then i'm going to try and soften some of this in very very gently if i can all right just very gently so like for example i'm going to pull towards the brush stroke just to try and create this very soft feeling if it's something round you could just go around in little circles like this it just you see the way it kind of softens it into the background ever so slightly just to create that sort of haziness on the picture on the, on, on the canvas just that little touch of haziness about the background okay even if some of them soften in together like this it really doesn't matter it's just to create some movement in the background of the painting that's all okay that's all i'm trying to do so now you can see it's kind of almost disappearing as it comes down you see that and then what you can do is okay get your flat brush again take a little highlight color so some pink and some white and then you could really pop a little highlight in here and there like this you see that little touches with the corner of your brush just to suggest some of the petals catching the light i'm just literally dabbing you see just dabbing dab 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 and that will do fine it's just to catch the light that's all now we have some lovely ones over here <clears throat> lovely bright rich almost rich pink ones jumping off of the canvas don't we let's go like that okay and let's put another one like that a little more magenta don't be shy with your colors put another one like that okay then go to some white and i'm using real solid brush strokes now for this okay see what i mean really solid ones and go like that another one like that that's just one coming kind of coming into the corner of the painting i'm then going to take some blue and some white for this one and i'm going to pop some blue into that now what i'm going to do is take some really dark color some magenta and some crimson with a little blue and i'm just going to pop a dark just on the edge of some of those okay um here for example just to suggest the deep color catching the edge of some of those petals okay just like that and again i'm going to soften very gently all these just soften them into your background if you're worried about making a mess of this now with the softening you can just leave it okay but i'd like to just give it that slightly faded look now we have some leaves don't we also we have a little touch of color going on up here as well so i could simply 
take some magenta and a hint of blue and I could just go up there take a hint of white and pop a little color in here and there as well look just suggest some leaves or petals rather suggest a few little petals up there as well a bit of pink on them look a touch of pink like that you could put one or two like that take a bit of blue pop a little bit of blue in there it's all just to really as i said before it's just to tell the story that's really all we're trying to do tell a story of what's going on of what it is pop another one or two in down under here you see the way it's not even solid brush strokes it's sort of just very light hazy touches of color here and there see what i mean it's just tiny little bits now we could go with some darker ones as we get further down because as we come down it's going to start, start getting much much darker and deeper and richer Okay, so nice dark colours look, a little bit of black in with the purple. And these will then be softened through with the brush as well. Okay. Now if you're softening, is that working properly, let the canvas dry for a while before softening them in. If you have the time, that is, you know. Um, you know my canvas is kind of, the background is sort of drying in kind of almost... In a few minutes so it's allowing me to kind of put very thin layers of extra paint over the top all right the trick is really not to put on too much paint just go easy with the paint that you're putting on all right that's all i'll say okay now i want to pop some petals in and oh yeah we have our leaves let's do our leaves our nice rich green leaves let's go with some cadmium yellow and a little black first so i always mix cadmium yellow with black first right okay for a green then start adding some blue as you see fit little touch of thalo blue okay just like that and this is just kind of the base color. I'll start adding other colors into this as I go. So look, I've made it slightly cooler with some blue. Like that. Then we come up here to this one. And this is a nice dark kind of green, isn't it? Very dark, rich green. Get some blue and some black for that with a hint of the green in it. Big, big leaves. Look at that. Nice big leaves. I will finish this with a pointy brush as well, so don't worry, okay? We'll finish this all with a pointy brush. Let's get some of that dark. Some of the blue and the black lovely color and let's go in and give this a little bit of a shadow in there then i'll take some burnt umber into that and i'm going to just start darkening the burnt umber just to give it a little tone a little bit of depth there's a bit of darkness kind of especially down around the bottom isn't there there's a very very nice dark in around the bottom of the leaves just down there like that let's get some blue and some black like that then we take some more umber so you can see i'm pulling hints of color so like that hint of burnt umber now just up there like that okay and I'll take a hint of that darker colour 
for around the edge of this leaf here, just sort of flicking it downwards. Okay, like so. And we have another nice dark one. We actually have a cool one as well down here, don't we? I'm going to pop that cool one in. Like so. Maybe take a hint of white in there. Okay, like that. Then we have a darker section of that. So I'm just simply picking up darker colors. You see, look, pulling it in towards the center of the leaf. Like that. Just take our time and, you know, look, if you find it slightly overwhelming, um, you can just leave the leaves out. You don't really have to put leaves in. I just think the green really complements the mobs very, very well. So that's why I'd like to put the greens in. But it would be absolutely stunning as well without these greens, okay? It really would. You really don't have to put these greens in. It's entirely up to yourself. Take a bit of burnt umber just for behind that leaf there. Look where that little stalk is coming out. It goes down onto a branch actually, doesn't it? The whole flower. So I might add more leaf just around there. I think I'll add just a little flick of a green in there just to sit the whole thing down on the stalk. Okay, the twig, a little bit like that. Okay, now I am going to soften ever so slightly again. Just kind of soften this out ever so slightly. Going around carefully around the edge. And I'm going to soften some of these back, back ones here as well the next thing i'm going to do is start putting some nice highlights on these i'm going to get a smaller brush okay and <clears throat> just grabbing some little highlights here and there basically that's what i want to do just grab a few highlights i have a small new brush here okay small flat and let's just get some highlight color let's mix some yellow little white little naples yellow and a hint of blue okay so it's a very bright kind of green and simply like that okay and maybe a hint of it on the back like that you can soften it with your fingers so now you can see already Nice little bright, catching the sun. Take another bit of that yellow, let's take a hint of blue. Maybe just so it's not as green or as bright. Um, I'm going to go around this leaf here because there's a separate leaf the way it's kind of twisted upwards like that. So I'm going to go around that like that, then around the shadow like so. Take a little burnt dumber cadmium yellow burnt umber and cadmium yellow by the way also make a fantastic green in case you're wondering and then soften that lighter color outwards you see i'm just dragging it out very gently softening it outwards and then separate that petal or that leaf there just separate that little leaf so now now you can see a bit of a sheen on the canvas there okay so it's not showing its true colors i do apologize 
and I'm going to add a little touch of light to some of these and again look you don't have to really copy the photograph exactly you can put your own little twists on this as well if you like to understand you don't really have to copy every single piece exactly you put your own little thing on this as well so let me take a little bit of a light and just pop a little light on that down there so just going along the center and maybe a little bit here and there on that side and a little on that side okay it's just adding little touches that's all <clears throat> right pointy brush you get some little veins in on these let's go with some of that nice bright color that nice bright whitey green put a couple of veins in on the leaves okay one two three four another one five there we are and we can maybe suggest just some brightness around the edge of that one there and this one here do you understand it's just really just adding a little detail that's all okay just like that now i want to get some dark in under that a very rich dark green so cadmium yellow black and i want to go right in here and give this some real dark color nice dark dark green in under there then some phthalo blue with a little black so this now will really stand out nice against the petal once we start painting these petals which will be very soon by the way this will really stand out very nice all right there we go and i'll just stand back don't forget to stand back and take a look nice dark colors in around there all right then i'm going to take a little maybe a little burnt umber and black and just darken the tip of this leaf just here okay just as it comes in it's getting nice and dark then just a little shadow behind some of those little veins on that leaf on some of the leaves Little, let's go ahead, let's just refine the shadow here on this okay to even bring a little line down it's really kind of thinking about detail but not in the traditional sense of putting detail in it's just to create a sense of detail that's all so look underneath these just a little you see just a little line behind those just some of them under that there as well and we could just refine some of these just to create the impression that there's little leaves popping out underneath here and there okay doesn't have to be perfect and I put a little burnt umber in there just to show the branch now I'm going to take some burnt umber with black and put this lovely branch in. You may need a stronger, thicker brush for this now, but as I have this brush, I'm just going to use it anyway, okay? Um, bring it over like that, leave it disappear into that leaf. A nice wiggly one, look, nice and wiggly. 
pop a little bud on the end of it sticking out somewhere just like that isn't this lovely this is so much fun i have to be honest it's just so so fun doing this kind of work um a little bit there maybe suggestion of that one there i'll soften that back in like so and i must say we're getting there now there's just one or two small deep ones i want to put in down there some nice dark colors i'm going to take some phthalo blue some of the green and i just want to pop a couple of really nice dark bluey ones in down there okay they're really nice they just create a lovely hue down in the background down there they're really nice Then take a little hint of magenta in that. Create a nice dark magenta. And again, I'll simply just pop a hint of some lighter colors in around here and there, okay? You see, it's just really exaggerating what's going on. So for example, look, let's put a couple of little twigs suggestion of some little twigs and all that kind of thing and then i'll soften them in again slightly with the brush okay so very gently go over those i hope we're having fun so far i really do i hope we're having fun with this now so far we're pretty much ready for our flower aren't we before I go any further, I just want to add a couple of splashes of bright pink. Just here and there. So here, for example. Okay. And I want to put one or two just down here as well. Just to suggest the light perhaps catching on some petals and leaves and all that kind of thing okay so for here for example maybe a hint of it there you can rub it back in with your finger you see now i know i should be wearing gloves for this but look it's not very often i use my fingers in painting so i think i'll be fine and a couple of striking touches of color now you see how that just really jumps off of the canvas a little. Let's move on to our flower. So I think we're pretty much going well so far. I start blocking in my flower, I think, yes. I get another brush and I'm gonna dampen that brush. <clears throat> I start, I suppose, with the warmer colors. I think a little crimson, magenta and some white. I think that colour first, just to start blocking in some of the petals. So now I'm not going to look really at the petals too much. Um, I know on the photograph there's lots of lights and darks and all that kind of thing. I just simply want to block in with a colour. Not the very white ones, but where I see the pinks on the petals i'm just going to start blocking them in just like that so we've a bit of pink there and we've a little bit of pink up here coming into it okay maybe a hint of blue in the mix over here a little bit of blue around here so you can get the idea i'm just filling in some of the darker shades on the petals very white one here okay so i'm going to leave that then in the background we also have some nice 
lights and darks in the leaves, the petals, back there as well, don't we? I'm just going to put a suggestion of some of them here and there. We even go with some slightly darker ones. And it's really just to allow it to fade out into the background, you understand? That's kind of, that's all I want to do really. Now I have to get some more blue on my palette. And I will be softening all of these ones into the background as well. Little bit of phthalo blue. Little touch of magenta perhaps. And I could pop some of those nice mauve ones in at the back. It's very sort of random, isn't it? It's just like flicks of petals here and there. So we don't have to be too fussy with all of this. And I can pop another one or two in, just there. Next I'm going to, actually we still have a bit of pink on this one in here. I'm gonna pop a little bit just on that. Now, we'll start taking some whites. I'm going to start pushing some whites into some of these. Okay. Okay, so there, for example. Um, beautiful white one here. This one is cutting into that leaf. So we need to be careful. Just thick paint on its own. Clean the brush. Again, get some more white. Let's pop this one in get some more white pure white paint now nothing else okay that's all I'm using um, come up here take a bit of white so you see I really wanted that white to stand out against the background so I went nice and deep with the background okay Clean the brush again, and you can, of course, if you like, use a smaller brush for this. I'm just used to using big brushes. I think a big brush stroke like this, it just feels more natural. And then you can go into a smaller brush later on. But just to get the blocking in and stuff done like that, I think a big brush is just fantastic. Now, nice bright highlight in there, look, just like that. Flick it upwards into the flower. like so again clean the brush pick up some white and we could pop some white in in the background ones as well just to help it transition into the background sort of disappearing off in the background does that make sense and i pop another little touch of it in here and a bit there Okay, we're doing quite nicely. Um, I'll start adding a little bit of white into this. I'm going to pop a little touch of it around the edge like that. I'm slowly going to pull that white down into the petal. So it's all kind of falling towards the centre of the petal, does that make sense? And then I'm going to bring some, I think a little burnt umber, just in around the centre, maybe a little touch of magenta in around the centre here, just to create a bit of shadow first, okay, just for now. Fill it in. Then I'm going to start moving to my smaller flat brush. Okay, that lovely small flat brush that I just had, which I can't find for reasons unknown to me. I cannot find the brush I need. There it is, little flat brush. I'm going to start putting in now some real proper chunks of colour with this brush. So I'm going to start with white. And Naples yellow. I'm going to get that real bright whitey highlight now on the the petal here, okay? There we 
we go. And give it a little whiz around. Now isn't that really eye-catching? It just jumps forward, doesn't it? And with another little bit around here on this petal as well. And it kind of goes off like that. So I start with the highlights and then I work in my nice darks into all of this. Okay, more white, more Naples yellow. And the white and Naples yellow really give you this very bright white, very eye-catching white. Okay, so I'll go up here and let me see now. I'll go up here like this, bring it down at a slight angle like that. So always follow the direction of the petals. You see, that tells you which way they're going. We have a nice bright edge on this here. Then I'm going to kind of flick all of that down. Like so. Let's get some more white. Um, I'm going to go to this one. Give that a nice punch. A nice little bit of a punch there with that brush, you see. Then up here, I'm going to just literally wiggle the brush around. It's very messy up here, isn't it? It's really difficult even to tell which petal goes where. It's just lots of wiggly lines like this, okay? Very difficult to tell. It's really starting to stand out, isn't it? And I particularly like this petal here. This is quite nice. So let's just get a little bit there. Then I'm going to add a little white, some of those back there. I think that little touch of white back there will really catch the eye. Very, very loose, this painting, it's very loose. Um, a little bit down here, I think. Like that, okay. And I might pop just to separate this leaf here. Now let me first get this very bright color in that we have here, okay, and it turns and goes around. But then I might just give this edge, even though it's not on the picture, a little flick like this. Flicking it down and into the petal. Okay, I think that works a little bit, a little bit better. Also, I will go here, give maybe a tiny suggestion of light catching some of these, and it's really only just to separate it from the background. That's that's the only reason. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit on this. Okay. So I need to do something about softening the centre of this. Let me take some crimson and magenta and some burnt umber. I'm simply going to just add a little touch of deep colour into some of these, okay? Coming down into the center. Or from the center out, whichever you prefer, okay? I'll take some crimson and magenta on its own, and I'm gonna give some shadow around some of these petals here. A 
I'll take a little magenta with a touch of white and I go up here and give a little darkness just on some of those. So you can see now how all of this is kind of coming to life slowly. We have a little shadow over here, don't we? Maybe a hint of blue in some of them. I'm going to give that a little hint of blue. Nice little purple shadow. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put this lovely shadow as well. We get a bit more blue. The shadows really are very important. They're probably the most important aspect of a flower like this. The shadows. You have to get the shadows, you know, in there because if you don't, it just won't look alive. Now I hope I'm doing my shadows okay. I really do. I'm not excellent at painting flowers. I'll be honest, but. I do like to try from time to time. Now soften that in all around there. Now I make a nice shadow colour for another of the petals. So we have this shadow done. We have a nice shadow over here. Okay. And I'm going to deepen this shadow as well. I'm going to get a nice soft colour for this shadow over here. So we're getting there slowly. I'm just kind of taking my time, one thing at a time. Do you understand what I mean? Just look around. If you see a bit of a shadow, just pop a bit of a shadow in. Whatever you think. Okay. Like that. Um, I go up, there's a nice little shadow up there actually. I must put that in. It's a lovely shadow up there. So I'm going to simply go like that. Pop a little one behind there. Now I know they're only small little things, but they do they will make a difference in the end of your painting. They really will. And perhaps a couple. Now I'll get a small pointy brush, okay? I'm gonna get a couple of small shadows. Just take your time with these, take your time, there's no rush. A couple of nice little shadows in to separate some of those petals as well, okay? Just like that. Now, I'm going to get some, um, oh no, I want to do, oh yes, just around here, I want to just separate that petal from that one. And simply now, I'm just going to go around and we'll find some of the petals, okay, with a dark, dark colour, just around the insides. And that should really help. Um, just kind of separate them and tell you what's what. I hope it's working. You know, it's, it's always tricky painting flowers like this, always. Trying to get the right colour and the right balance 
is always tricky okay and I've never been the expert at painting flowers I'll be honest I've never been the expert but I do like to give it a good go but I think in general it's a very eye-catching painting isn't it very eye-catching colors um, I'm gonna go up here now and start putting in nice thick paint I'm going to start putting some nice thick swirls of paint up there just really to separate the mixture of petals that are up there and you know you really can just go to town with something like this okay let me stop now for a moment I'm going to put in the centres because I think once the centres are in, the entire thing should spring to life. Let me get some nice green, uh, perhaps a little bit of burnt umber. Pop a nice little warm colour in down there first, okay? Just like that. Then even go in with some burnt umber on its own. Pop a little bit of depth down there, just to give it that deep colour. Maybe a little bit of magenta as well. I'm actually going to take some crimson. I'm going to put a little hint of crimson around that petal there. I'm going to put a little touch of it in here as well. I want to take a little crimson and put a hint of crimson up here. So these little touches of pink now will really jump out. We have a beautiful pink leaf in behind here, don't we? I almost forgot about that. Then a little bit of brown at the back. Then we have those nice little pieces in the middle. Not sure what they're called, little small little dots in the middle. Get some yellow and touch of crimson. And lovely strong touches of orange. And I think that will really bring the entire thing to life, won't it? There we go. We don't have to go crazy. A little dab maybe of pink right in the centre. I'll take a little bit of black. Half a little bit of black just down towards the bottom, just to give it a bit of shadow and depth right down there in the middle. And tap it with your finger just to soften it away. Okay, that's coming on quite nice, I have to say. That's coming on quite nice. I'm going to just lighten some of the greens ever so slightly all right I think they need a little bit more yellow maybe a hint of this orangey color in with the yellow just to I show you why just to maybe allow the Sun to catch some of them a little bit more so the Sun is really catching these colors You see? I think that's a little bit better. I think it's just more eye-catching. And perhaps a touch around here. Okay, I'm going to put in then a couple of small veins, although it's not on 
photograph, I think just one or two. And just a bit darker at the bottom there. Um, I'll take a little of that yellow and just pop it, dab it out around the edge of that. <clears throat> um, I'll take a little light pink, pop a little touch of light pink around the edge of some of that. And a little dab it around there. You see, I'm complementing the painting now by adding hints of pink here and there, you see. So these little hints of pinks now will help complement. Do you understand? Tiny, tiny touches. How's that, my friends? We have a slight tar in the leaf here. I want to get that in. So it's a kind of wiggly line goes along like that. So in other words, the front of the leaf is turning upwards. Does that make sense? Let's go a bit darker. Front of the leaf is just turning. Then I'll take some bright white and I'll go around that with some bright white like so. Soften that bright white up. Now you can go as long as you want on petals like this, okay? You can take as long as you need. Um, I could be here all day. I love doing this kind of stuff, adding lots of thick white paint on. I could be doing this forever. I really could. It's just a joy to paint something like this. It's up to yourself, really, you know? And let's put, you know, lots of thick paint on your brush. Lots of thick paint. Don't be shy. Really pick out those brights. I'm going to brighten this one slightly as well. I think just really to catch your eye. I think it makes a bit of a difference, don't you? Now I'm going to soften. How many is? There we go. I need to bring a shadow across here just for that leaf. I think it needs it. it needs a little bit of a shadow there. So I'm going to carry this shadow right across into that leaf in there. Just get some of that nice shadow color. I don't want to leave this undone. I think while I have it now, I might as well do it. Okay. And there we go, my friends. I think I shall leave it at that. I don't want to, you know, spoil it any more than I need to. Although I know it's not perfect. Um, the canvas didn't help being so dry. But I think, in general, I think it's quite nice. I think I've really caught the feeling which I wanted to get. I think I have. I think I did. I'm quite happy with this. I'm going to put this in a frame now and I'm going to show you what it looks like in the frame. A little bit of a white back just there, just to tone that down just a little. And maybe a little shadow here and there. Okay, one more small thing I think I should do, and that is just to put a little tiny suggestion of a shadow around here and there for that. Separate that one. 
And my friends, I think I call that done. I'm very happy. I think it turned out quite nice. There we go. Job done. Finished. Finite. Um, there's one small piece I need to fill in just behind this. There we go. Just like that. Just to finish it off. And you can go around now and add little touches and bits and pieces like that. I still might. Okay. But in general, I think that's turned out pretty well, don't you? And there we go. I have a frame, my friends. Let me grab my frame. Here's one I made earlier, as they say. There we go. And that'll just about stay there now. And that's it. All done. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so, so much for all your support. Um, will I try and zoom in? Let me try and zoom in there a little. There we go. You can see it's lots of thick paint with the palette knife, isn't it? Just put on plenty. You can, or not with the palette knife, sorry, with my brush. You can use a palette knife as well. Pop loads of paint on with your palette knife if you wish. But I think I've captured a nice mood in the painting. So I'm very, very happy about that. Um, now, there we go. Let me, so there we go, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed that. I think it looks absolutely stunning. I'm very happy. And just keep it simple, okay? Don't overcomplicate it. If it's too much, if there's too much detail in this, you can just leave a lot of it out and just focus on the flower. But the most important thing, I think, is the colours. Just getting those colours right and complementing the colours around the canvas, okay? So do enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed painting this um, or painting along with me if you are, if you are painting. Thank you so much. Um, if you wish to support me, I sincerely appreciate all your support. Pop over to Patreon, there's lots going on over there as well. So, that's it. I need a coffee and I'm going to um, hang this on my wall and look at it proudly. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. God bless and happy painting everyone. Take care.